Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin and the Pi Cycle Top Indicator. If you guys like the content, please subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Let's go for 250,000 subscribers. So let's go ahead and jump in. So there's a lot of fuss because everyone's talking about the Pi Cycle Top Indicator um, and the fact that it's rapidly approaching across, okay? So if you're not familiar with the Pi Cycle Top Indicator, uh, essentially it, it sort of identifies the tops, the prior Bitcoin tops, based on when these two moving averages cross. Um, and actually, you know, we've seen them, we've seen them cross three times prior. Um, one is is of the what is one is the 111 day moving average, um, the other the 350, and it's twice twice that. So let's go back in time and look at the various crosses of the Pi Cycle Top. So there was one in 2013, in early 2013, and it was in April. And it was considered a Pi Cycle Top, but I would not actually consider this to be the peak of the market cycle, okay? Because we ultimately sort of picked ourselves up by our bootstraps and, and continued along the way until the end of the year. And in fact, we peaked again in November or so of 2013. So we had two Pi Cycle Tops. And, and then we had another Pi Cycle top here in December of 2017. So just over four years later, we had another Pi Cycle top. So generally speaking, based on historical moves, when they cross, we've had the Pi Cycle top indicator say that, okay, when it crosses, we're within approximately three days of a local top. So today they are getting somewhat close. We've been following this one for the last few months. If we were to take a measured move from their current, from where they currently sit, we can see that they are approximately about two and a half percent or so, two, two, two and a half to three percent apart from each other. So we still have some time before they theoretically cross. If we were to extrapolate these moves, we might consider them to be crossing here in the next few days or weeks. Uh, for instance, this type of extrapolation, some type of linear extrapolation from where they currently are and it would put them maybe crossing within within a week or so. Um, however, we do know that these are contingent on the price. And so depending on what the price of Bitcoin does could actually impact whether they cross or not. If you go back to the last cycle and look, when, they, when we were actually starting to get close to crossing in September of 2017, and in fact, at the time, we got to within say 8% or so of crossing, and then they actually diverged again for a while before ultimately crossing in December. So we know they have the ability to, to, to get close to one another, like this was 8%, and then they ultimately diverged back to about 15% or so. So we know that we have the possibility for that to happen. What could cause something like that to happen? Well, if we had a substantial correction in the short term, like this one, that could actually cause them from converging here in the next few weeks. Um, the other thing to keep in mind, as I've always said with all models, we know that all models are wrong, some are useful. In the same manner, this model has not yet proven to be predictive in any way. It was developed after the prior, alt or the prior peaks, and so we do not know yet if it's going to be predictive. In the same manner, the models we talk about on the channel a little bit more, like our regression bands and whatnot, it's the same thing, right? We, we do not know yet if they are going to be predictive because so far we've been following them for this market cycle. So we're sort of looking at all, all of these things collide, if you know. But what I would say is that if every indicator you look at is signifying that things should cool down over the next few weeks, then I don't think many people would be surprised if something like that happened. For instance, Imagine a scenario where Bitcoin has another leg up and, and we move even higher. Um, and and this, if we do this, there's a, a very, very high probability that in the not so distant future, we do see a cross of these two moving averages, okay? And if we see that, right? So if we see this cross and we're also, you know, moving decisively into our peak regression band, and then we also come over here and, and we look at say like the, the monthly RSI, which again, I don't know how useful the RSI is um, uh, because you know it can stay overheated for substantial amounts of time in a row and it'll just keep telling you that you're overbought or oversold and the price can change a lot in that time frame. 
Um, but if you look at, say, like the monthly RSI, we can see, and this is the relative strength index, if it's below 30, it means it basically it's oversold. If it's above 70, it's overbought. Currently, it's at 92. Um, and for Bitcoin, we've seen major market or local tops, sometimes market cycle tops, at around this 97 level. Um, and we are quickly approaching it. So imagine a future scenario where we go into April and we're going well into the regression band. We have a pie cycle top. We're also looking at the monthly RSI going to 97. This is a, these are a lot of indicators sort of um, basically saying the same thing. Okay, so it's just another reminder that, of course, we no one knows really what's going to happen, but always protect yourself, manage your risk so that you're not necessarily um, overexposed to the market if something like that were to happen and, you, and you're looking to um, capitalize on that. But at the end of the day, we'll always say it, all models are wrong, some are useful, we'll follow them, we'll see how useful they are. But we can see that by a lot of standards, by a lot of these different models that we've developed over the last few years to, to look at and figure out where the market is, we do know things that are getting, we do know things are getting overheated, but we also know that based on these models, even with these models, which are again, based on historical data, but even with these models, we could still have room to move up based on all three of them, based on all three of them, there still is potentially room to move up. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Remember to check out the premium list altcoin season sale. You get access to the weekly reports and videos, the trading view indicators like you see here, the, um, the premium only live streams, the Into the Cryptoverse app, and a whole lot more. Make sure you guys check out the sale. We're gonna up the prices on that here in the next few days. So thank you guys for tuning in, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you next time, bye.